All right, so the mission and purpose of HESA, right, uh, is really to provide all of New Jersey residents with financial aid assistance in financial aid uh, information. All right, so if you are intending to attend school outside of the state of New Jersey, HESA is an agency you would do no work with, okay? But if you stay in the state of New Jersey, HESA will be contacting you on a yearly basis to make sure you are receiving your grants, eligible scholarships, and things of that nature. All right, so goals of financial aid, right? Um, they are responsible for allocating funds to each student enrolled at the institution and also make sure that that university is upholding the regulations from the state and federal side, all right? So as soon as you are accepted into that university, you will be assigned a financial aid counselor, okay? That is probably the most underutilized uh, session, one-on-one -on -one sessions for college students. So just like students will meet with their academic advisors throughout the semester, um, mental health clinicians, go to the rec center and things like that, I do encourage students to have at least one one-on-one -on -one meeting with their financial aid counselor so they can make sure they are in good standings in receiving the el el eligibility of, of their grants and scholarships, okay? So whatever school you are accepted to, you will be assigned a financial aid counselor. Okay, it's definitely your duty to make sure you are scheduling those one-on-one -on -one appointments with that individual. So tonight we are going to discuss federal aid, okay, meaning no matter what institution you attend throughout this nation, if you qualify for that federal aid, you will receive it. Okay, we will talk about aid for and benefits of staying in, in the state of New Jersey. Okay, because you pay taxes in New Jersey, there are some benefits and grants you may be eligible for, all right? Also, the college and university, they have a lot of institutional funds that they distribute on an annual basis, and we'll get into that, along with outside organizations and opportunities for you to look for scholarships and things like that, all right? So the type of aid we're going to discuss is from the grant side, meaning money you do not have to pay back, all right? We would discuss scholarships, whether it's uh, personal scholarships or university scholarship opportunities, along with loans, whether they're federal or private loans that you may be eligible for. And we're gonna end things with employment opportunities during your duration of time at your university. All right, so first thing up is federal all right, only thing you have to do in order to be considered for these federal grants is fill out the FAFSA application each and every year. All right, the federal grants to look out for is the Pell Grant, which you can receive up to $6,895 a year. The SEOG Grant, which you receive up to $4,000 a year and something called the TEACH Grant, which you could receive up to $3,772 each and every year, okay? This is obviously based on your income, but again, if you leave the state of New Jersey, if you're eligible for these federal grants, you will receive them. All right, for students um, staying in the state of New Jersey, right? This is one of our largest grants that we offer our New Jersey residents, the tuition aid grant, the TAG grant, all right? Uh, only thing you have to do, obviously, is fill out the FAFSA each and every year to be eligible for this TAG grant. Uh, demonstrate a financial need, so it's based on your household income. Uh, be a US citizen, eligible non-citizen, or New Jersey dreamer. Must be a New Jersey resident. Okay, so again, you have to attend school in New Jersey to receive this tuition aid grant. Must be a full-time and an approved degree program. So you have to be enrolled at that university for 12, at, uh, I'm sorry, for 12 or more credits each and every semester in order to receive the full amount of this grant. And also you must meet all state deadlines for graduating seniors. Your deadline is June 30th. 
If you complete your FAFSA after June 30th, you will not be eligible for this grant, okay? Once you are accepted into that university, you are a full-time college student, your new deadline for your FAFSA is April 15th each and every year, okay? Again, this is one of the largest grants you'll be able to receive. I've seen students receive up to $10,000 a year on this tuition aid grant. And again, if you fill out the FAFSA after the deadline, you will not be eligible for this grant. There's nothing you can do until the following year. All right, we have something called the Educational Opportunity Fund. That's actually the program I work with at Rome University. Okay, so this award ranges from $200 to $3,000 each and every year, depending on your institution. At Rome University, we give all of our EOF students a grant for $9.75 if they live on campus each and every semester, along with Rome University giving all of our students an additional $1,000 EOF endowment. Okay, so each school is different. Um, in order to qualify, you must meet at, uh, demonstrate educational and economically disadvantaged background. And also, you must fill out the FAFSA application each and every year to receive this grant. We have a scholarship called the Governor's Urban Scholarship, okay? You must rank within the top 5% of your class at the end of junior year, attain a 3.0 GPA at the end of junior year, attend an approved New Jersey college or university, uh, follow your FAFSA each and every year again, right? and have a New Jersey eligibility index of 10,500. All right, for this particular scholarship, you can meet with your guidance counselor to see if you're eligible, all right? And again, for this scholarship and also the EOF grant, you have to stay in the state of New Jersey in order to receive it. All right, we also have the NJ Star Scholarship, all right? Uh, it's for New Jersey residents who rank in the top 15% of your class at the end of junior or senior year of high school. Uh, students must attain a cumulative GPA of a 3.0 or higher at the start of third semester at your county college. So you have to start off at the community college in order to be eligible for this scholarship. Follow FAFSA or New Jersey Alternative Financial Aid application. So again, in order to receive this scholarship, you have to fill out the FAFSA each and every year. Once you graduate, right, with your associate's degree from that community college and transfer over to your four-year institution, this scholarship will follow you, okay? So you'll be eligible for something called the NJ Stars II scholarship. Um, you must have received NJ Stars funding in order to be eligible and have a ATI of less than $250,000 for your household. Uh, must earn an associate's degree, so you have to graduate from that county college in order to be eligible. With a 3.25 GPA or higher, you may receive up to $2,500 annually for public or private four-year institutions. Must take at least 12 college credits, so again, you have to be enrolled at that institution full time each and every semester. And you must file your FAFSA application each and every year to continue to be eligible for this scholarship. All right, so here in New Jersey, we have the Community College Opportunity Grant. All right, it covers tuition and fees minus all other grants and scholarships. Um, your AGI, your adjusted gross income, must be between zero and sixty-five thousand dollars in order to receive the maximum grant. If your AGI is between sixty-five thousand and eighty thousand, you will receive up to half of that grant for that community college. Okay. Again, you must be a New Jersey resident, attending a county college, file your FAFSA each and every year. For this particular grant, you can be enrolled in, in the, at that institution part-time, okay? But the minimum of credits is six, okay? You must make satisfactory academic progress, so you must be enrolled in, 
You must showcase that you're uh, working towards graduating in a timely manner, usually two and a half years at a county college. Okay, it must have a complete state grant record, so the FAFSA has to be complete, and all of your documents that's requested of you from the state must be finalized in order for you to receive this grant. All right, so uh, some self-help loans and gap shortfall uh, solutions for parents and students paying their tuitions. Um, monthly payment plans. So a lot of universities are offering monthly payment plans for students and parents. Okay, so you can definitely meet with the bursar's office of that institution to see what that plan looks like. I know at Rowan University, um, let's say if you owe $3,000 for the fall semester, they will break that uh, amount up into three payments of $1,000 throughout the semester. That's how we we'll look at our own university, but every university is different. All right, for students, okay, you are all eligible for federal student loans. Okay, you are eligible for the subsidized student loan of $3,500 a year, and also unsubsidized federal student loan for $2,000 a year. Okay, for students, only thing you have to do is fill out your FAFSA application um, and indicate to the financial aid department that you want to take out these loans, okay? Uh, but you're all eligible. All right, so we also have the NJ Class Supplemental Loan Program. All right, so this is a loan, as you can see, the rates, the interest rates are fairly low or decent. Um, you are eligible for this loan even if you leave the state of New Jersey. Okay, so if you're looking for a private loan uh, to help pay off your tuition, this is a really good loan that New Jersey offers their residents. Even if you leave the state, you'll still be eligible. All right, um, this loan could be in the student's name or the parent's name. All right, and parents, last but not least, we have the Federal Plus Program for Parents. All right, so if parents would like to take out a federal uh, parent plus loan in their name to help offset the cost of tuition, you can take one out as well. All right, now the cool thing is, if parents is denied this loan, the student could go down to the financial aid department and, and indicate that their parent was denied, okay? And the financial aid department can increase the federal loan in the student's name an additional $2,000. Okay, so that unsubsidized student loan will be increased if needed. All right, so some institutional and private scholarship searches. All right, um, I like to tell parents and students, um, these universities have millions and millions of dollars of institutional funds that they distribute on an annual basis, all right? Uh, for example, at Rome University, we have something called the RISE Scholarship, where um, these are for students that are, is not eligible for the EOF grant. Uh, Rowan will give those individuals an additional $2,000 RISE Scholarship to go through our EOF program. So those students will not be eligible for the EOF grant, but Rowan offsets the cost by providing them with a RISE scholarship, all right? Um, it, it's an incentive and, and, and definitely a marketing tool to attract freshmen to come to their institution, all right? So when you all are applying uh, for admissions at these institutions, make sure that you are communicating with your admissions counselors to see what type of incentives they have for students. Um, and things like that to come to their school. And also, um, a lot of hard work is spent um, senior year of high school on getting scholarships, but there's actually a lot more scholarships once you're enrolled at that institution. So mid-freshman year, the university, each and every year, sends out a link of scholarships that they have for their returning students. Okay, so just as much work as you're putting in uh, looking for scholarships now, uh, this time next year, you'll probably be eligible for twice as many. Okay, so again, make sure you're meeting with your financial aid counselor in order to find out about a lot of these scholarships. All right, a lot of them is from alumni, uh, 
from the university that they uh, distribute each and every year. Um, and a lot of students do not take advantage of these scholarships, all right? So once you're enrolled at that institution, do not stop your search. There's actually a lot more funding for you. So for the larger schools, uh, for their institutional funds, they lean on something called the CSS profile, okay? So as you can see, approximately 400 colleges and organizations use this profile to help distribute their institutional funds. Um, not all universities use this, all right? Um, for example, Montclair, uh, TCNJ schools, uh, Division III schools like that do not utilize the CSS profile, all right? So it might not be a beneficial for you to apply uh, for a, a CSS profile application, all right? If you are applying to NYU, uh, Princeton, and things like that, they do utilize the CSS profile, all right? And this is how they distribute those millions and millions of institutional funds I just spoke about, all right? So this is, uh, this do come with a cost, as you can see. Um, your income, uh, no payment for it, though, I'm sorry, no payment if your income is under $100,000, okay? And again, this application is available on October 1st of each and every year, so just like you are filling out the FAFSA on a yearly basis, they expect you to fill out the CSS profile the same. And this is a website for the CSS profile if you want to do your own research. And also the website if you're a non-custodial parent or guardian. All right, so we're going to transition into the FAFSA application. All right, so each and every year on October 1st, students are eligible to start to fill out their FAFSA application, as you can see. Um, you will go to that website, studentaid.gov, all right? With the FAFSA, they will be utilizing your prior, prior income, okay? So your 1040 form or your tax return documents from 2021 will go on this year's FAFSA application. All right, so prior to filling out the FAFSA application, all parents, okay? If you have a child in college now, uh, nine times out of 10, you already have an FSA ID, so you do not have to create a new one, all right? If parent has been enrolled at a college or university within the last six years, you probably already have an FSA ID, so you do not have to create one, all right? So again, parents, you will need an FSA ID, um, and students, you would have to create one for you as well in order to log into the FAFSA application. All right, so once you are logged in, right, um, they will ask questions about the parent's income and also the student's income. Um, has anyone filled out the FAFSA currently for next year? In here, okay, all right, thanks. So uh, when you are uh, approaching the parent income questions, you wanna make sure you utilize the data retrieval tool, okay? You should not manually input your income. All right, if you manually input your income, you will come up for verification. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but you should utilize the data retrieval tool uh, that will redirect you to the government's page, okay? You will confirm your general information, your first and last name, your address, your town, and things of that nature, and then they will ask, would you like to pull this information back over to your FAFSA application, you will indicate yes, and all of your income questions will be answered, okay? Also, with the IRS government page, when you're confirming your demographics, it has to read the exact same way as it reads on your 1040 tax return documents, all right? So if your name is spelled wrong in tax return documents, it has to be spelled wrong on the FAFSA application for the data retrieval section, or it will not process. All right, if uh, Colonial um, is in all caps on your tax documents, it has to be in all caps on the website. That makes sense? 
And this is what, uh, a quick snapshot of the parents' financials, as you can see. Uh, the first question, have your parents completed their IRS income tax return? Um, already completed. Uh, what type of income tax return did your parents file in 2021? You will indicate what form you have. And also, what is your parents' tax filing status? It has, it has to match, okay? Some general highlighted eligibility requirements for the FAFSA. Um, you must have a valid social security number. When filling out your FSA ID application online, you just wanna make sure you input the correct uh, social security number or you will not be verified. You will be stuck in that space uh, for weeks and on weeks until you change or, or, or fix that error, okay? Must be enrolled or accepted for enrollment in an eligible program of study. Uh, must be pursuing a degree, certificate, or a recognized credential. And again, from the federal side, you must be a U.S. citizen to be eligible for federal aid. Okay? Students, yes. Key components of the FAST for the lookout for. Um, student demographics, they ask the student's full name, social security number, date of birth. Uh, New Jersey applicants, you must answer the New Jersey's license question. Um, if you filled out the FAFSA today and you do not have a license, and let's say you earn your license in two months, you have to go back into the FAFSA application and upload or update that question. Okay, you have to add the student's license number or they will come up for verification during their freshman year of college. Um, they do ask students' income, okay? You should not manually input students' income if they file their taxes. Um, so you will utilize the IRS data retrieval for the parent income and the student income. Um, income earned from work, they do ask about. Um, student status. All right, they do ask if you are dependent or independent. All right, if a student is independent, no guardian and no, no parent information will go on their FAFSA application. Okay. Uh, parent demographics, right? Who is a parent, social security number, um, last name, and date of birth. All right. So the only parent that will appear on the FAFSA application is the parent that that student lives with 51% of the time, okay? So I get this question a lot, uh, what if my, uh, my dad claimed me but I live with mom? Mom info will only go on the fast one, okay? Uh, key, uh, additional key components, household size, all right? They do wanna know uh, how many people live in your household. Um, Again, only income that will appear on a FAFSA application is the parent and the student. So if you have an uncle or a grandma or grandparents living with you, their information will not go on the FAFSA. They just want to know how many people live in your household. Okay, so if you indicate five today on, on the FAFSA application and next uh, fall semester, the university asks you to list the individuals in your household, because they do that a lot. Um, if you indicate four people, but five people on the FAFSA, you will come up for verification. So if you indicate five, you have to maintain that number, okay? The following year, you can change it, all right? If you have siblings in college during the same years as you, all right, if you indicate, if one sibling indicate five members in their household, and the other indicate four, both will come up for verification to determine which one is the accurate number, all right? So again, the IRS data retrieval is, is very huge for uh, parents. Um, income earned from work, and they do ask if the parent is a dislocated worker or not. Uh, federal means tested benefits, right? They do ask about Medicaid, SSI, SNAP, and things of that nature. You can meet with your uh, financial aid counselor to, to inquire more about the SNAP that is available for college students, okay? 
And also you can list up to 10 colleges on the FAFSA application, and you can always go back into the FAFSA and edit and change and add additional colleges if needed, or remove colleges, okay? All right, so once you have completed the FAFSA application, uh, you have one more step if you stay in the state of New Jersey, okay? All New Jersey residents that attending school in New Jersey will have to create an NJ Fam's PISA account, okay? This is how the state of New Jersey will communicate with the student if they need additional documents from you, all right? If you come up for verification and things of that nature, you will log into NJ Fam's in order to inquire what else additional do the state need or, or request, all right? If you leave the state of New Jersey for school, you would not create a, 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 a NJ Fans account. Question? Yes. What if you don't know that this weekend when you're applying, where your student's going to wind up? That's a good I would still say create one because uh, nine times out of ten, you will still be um, applying for at least for a New Jersey school, at least one. Okay. And at times, students do transfer mid year. Okay, if you transfer mid-year, the state will start to communicate with you, all right? So you want to make sure you're in the system if that may happen, okay? All right, some common mistakes made on the FAFSA to look out for. Um, student name as it appears on the Social Security card, uh, Social Security number, and date of birth, okay? If any of if any of that information is inaccurate, um, it will not process. Uh, parent section versus the student section, all right, on your top left hand corner of the application, it will indicate what section um, you are in. So you just wanna make sure you input in the correct information in the right spot. Uh, number of people in the household, again, um, divorce or remarried households. Um, taxes paid versus taxes withheld, um, including untaxable uh, social security benefits. Um, parental and student assets, okay, uh, zero is a number, so they are asking you about what's in your savings, check-ins account, and things of that nature. Um, college grade level, very important. If you are uh, graduating a senior, you will indicate on the FAFSA that you never attended, this is your first year, and also you're working on your first bachelor's degree, okay? Um, if you indicate you're working on your second bachelor's degree, you're not eligible for any grants, okay? Um, Filing an application in an incorrect academic year. So uh, seniors, you are correct. You are filing the application for the years 2023-24. Okay, so you want to make sure you indicate that when you're logging into the FAFSA. And filing the wrong application based on student immigration status, and I'll get into that shortly. All right, so at times you may come up for state or federal verification. So again, um, the easiest way to come up for verification is manually input in your income. They will request documents, tax return transcripts from you to make sure that that information is accurate. All right, uh, remember that driver's license, if you earn your driver's license, you have to log back in to the FAFSA application and add that. So verification essentially means they will hold on to your funds until they receive the appropriate documents they need to release it, okay? So again, you can work with your financial aid counselor to make sure you are submitting appropriate documents. All right, so here in New Jersey, uh, we have opportunities uh, for New Jersey Dreamers. If you identify as a New Jersey Dreamer, uh, we do have funding for you. Okay, in order to be eligible, you must attend a New Jersey high school for at least three years, okay? Um, graduated from New Jersey high school, and you're able to file an affidavit stating that you have filed an application to legalize your immigration status, all right? So again, um, for New Jersey Dreamers, we do have state-only aid for you, so you won't be eligible for the federal student loans, 
the federal grants and things of that nature, but that tuition aid grant, uh, the EOF grant, you'll be eligible for it, okay, if you stay in the state of New Jersey. Um, also, this is a little, uh, a little bit different, right? All students must go to hesa.org to fill out this application. So if you're a dreamer, uh, you will not fill out the FAFSA application because that's a federal document, okay? You're not eligible uh, for federal aid, so you will not fill out the FAFSA application. You will go to hesa.org, you will register your account by creating a user ID and password. Um, and then you'll log in to complete the application by established deadlines, all right? Also, if you are staying in the state of New Jersey and you created an NJ Fans account, this is what your homepage will look like, students, all right? So you will always click on your to-do list, all right? The next uh, page from that to-do list it will, indicate, it will ask you which academic year uh, would you like information on, okay? So again, you will say 2023, 20, 24, and if you see all green boxes, you're in good standard, okay? If you see any red boxes, that means the state of New Jersey is requesting documents from you. They will hold on to your grants, your, your scholarships, until they receive those documents, all right? All right, so cost of attendance, uh, uh, be on the lookout for tuition and fees. I know a lot of times universities uh, boast about not raising tuition, but they raised all the other fees associated around it, okay? So you wanna make sure you're not only looking at tuition uh, for the past five years, you're looking at the room and board costs, right? And things like that. Um, books and supplies could be extremely expensive. I know um, students, a lot of students in the STEM fields are paying upwards to five or $600 per class for, for certain books, depending on the class. Uh, loan fees, uh, study abroad costs. So if you're thinking about studying abroad, just remember most programs will last an entire uh, semester. So you can be abroad for three and a half to four months. So you wanna be prepared for that. Uh, dependent uh, care expenses can be extremely expensive. Uh, expenses related to a disability, all right? So you wanna make sure that that university can, can accommodate your needs. And also expenses for co-op uh, education programs, right? It could be extremely costly as well. Some unexpected costs to factor in are Remedial courses, right? So these are courses that you will not earn credits for. These are lower level readings, maths, and writing courses. Um, in most cases, you can pass out of these lower level courses prior to starting your college career. Um, I believe these tests is around $25 to $50 to take these tests. Um, if you fail or you don't take the test, then you will be required to take some remedial courses. And they will be in place for uh, courses that will, will not come towards graduation, all right? So you wanna make sure that you're uh, passing out of these courses prior to starting college so you won't be there an extra semester or an extra year because these courses took up space uh, throughout your semesters. All right, change in majors, okay? Each major has different requirements. Um, I like to tell students they should um, apply to the university is undecided. It will increase your likelihood of being accepted into that school or university. And then you can apply and get into that major by the end of your first semester, okay? Or in the middle of your semester, all right? But again, uh, we do have students that apply and get into the start uh, at that university uh, for one major, and by the time they're a sophomore, they're ready to change, okay? So you just want to make sure if that do happen, that that new major is accepting those college credits you already earned, and they will count towards graduation, because if they do not, you will be there for an extra semester or potentially an extra year. Again, uh, obviously transferring, every university has different requirements, so if you transfer, you just want to make sure that they are accepting um, your already earned college credits, right? 
um, unpaid internships, loss of summer wages, um, study abroad costs again, uh, spring breaks, uh, trips home and pleasure costs can be extremely costly, and moving expenses. If you move out of state and things like that, you have to come home during uh, winter break, summer break, right? Um, some holidays, so you want to factor that in as well. All right, so the cycle of the financial aid process, um, October through March, uh, we expect you to uh, complete the FAFSA application, college search, college application process, and CSS profile. Um, February to May, schools typically send out their acceptance letters. In June and July, schools send out their fall semester bills, okay? Uh, where do I go from here? You can obtain and review admissions, uh, financial aid materials, and deadlines for each school to which you're applying to. You want to make sure that you're reaching or meeting those deadlines for applications for admissions, right? Uh, meet all application deadlines, the CSS profile. Again, you want to make sure you complete this faster for my graduating senior before June 30th, right? If you have uh, kids in college now, their deadline is April 15th. Um, other resources to look into is outside scholarships, right? Um, campus administrative payment plans, in which I mentioned a little bit earlier. Campus employment, all right? There's a lot of opportunities for students to work on campus. Um, on your FAFSA application, they do have a question about work study. Okay, that is a federal grant. So you want to indicate you want to be considered for federal work study. All right, your child could be giving a grant of up to $1,500 a year that will go towards them finding a job on campus and they will be paid out from that grant. Okay. Um, specialized campus opportunities, you can be an RA, a residential advisor, in which you help uh, manage the uh, dorms and things like that around campus. Um, student ambassadors, uh, student tour guides is available uh, within the admissions program, and also um, internships and co-op programs. Um, some useful private scholarship search um, tips. Um, again, institution. Uh, please ask questions to these colleges, whether it's the admissions or the financial aid department. Um, there's a lot of opportunities in-house that they can provide for students. Um, local libraries are good resources. Um, local businesses, right? Um, and also national businesses. Uh, I know this year we had a lot of students come in to Rowan University with um, uh, McDonald's scholarships and Coca-Cola scholarships. Uh, so definitely make sure you're checking these um, websites, right? They're corporate websites. They, um, and nine times out of ten, they have educational tabs in which you can click on and apply for those scholarships. Um, also, the parents' employer, parents ask your supervisors or what have you, um, do they have any opportunities for your child to attend school or college? Um, also, our, our website, ESA.org, we have opportunities on our website, fastweb.com, collegeboard.org, and mappingyourfuture.org is all useful uh, places to start looking for scholarships. And this is our contact information if you want to get in contact with the HESA rep. Um, I encourage folks to call after 5 p.m. There's a lot less traffic. Um, anytime before that, you may be on, 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 on hold for 30 to 40 minutes, but after 5 p.m., um, you, you'll probably get straight through, okay? And again, they stay open until 8 p.m. every day, except for Friday. All right, so I know I shared a lot. Um, I will open things up for questions. If you have any personal, individual questions you want to ask me, I'll stick around uh, and, and address and answer questions afterwards as well. 